you know, 20 to 30 year journey to create a three year success, like being grateful to be alive, you know, and that really rubbed off on me because I'm literally, I'm the same way. And my wife all the time, she's like, man, you, no matter what happens, you're like, well, the good news is it really isn't a bad day, right? If, right. if we, we get the choice to, to continue to have that bad attitude or be in that mood, right? we control that because if you live in resentment, if you live in anger, all you're doing is it, it's kind of like you're poisoning yourself over and over and over again. You, listen, there, there's plenty of obstacles, and I feel like every, like you said, I think everything that you've been through, it, it's it's a sum total of who we are today. Well, we, we hold ourselves back, of course. You know, there we, we've heard the, you know these terms tossed around, imposter syndrome, and it's it's all fear, right? We're we are afraid of other people's opinions or what's going to happen, what might not happen. Like we. We literally throw ourselves and create scenarios that don't even exist. One of the most powerful acronyms I've seen for fear is face everything and rise. Yeah, and it's so it's like the fear is a green light that needs to go, right? Face the power you seek lies within you, as we are each infinite beings living a human experience. The truth of who and what we are has been hidden from us until now. Awaken, my friends, to this new reality that we are in fact creating everything through the power and the gift of our wonderful imagination. Join me as I unlock the secrets of our past and reveal the truth that has been clouded in this veil we call life. What reality will you choose to create today? The choice is yours. Welcome, my friends, to my reality practice. Hello and welcome, everybody. Thanks for joining us today on the Reality Practice Podcast. I'm your host, Joey Kramer, and today's guest is Jordan Mendoza. Jordan is the founder and CEO of Blaze Your Own Trail Consulting where he helps entrepreneurs grow their business through st strategic marketing, sales, and leadership consulting. Jordan made a major shift in his own re version of reality in April of 2019 when he started creating content on LinkedIn and quickly realized the power of organic reach. By December, he'd already amassed over 20,000 followers using the strategy that he now teaches his clients. And since 2019, Jordan's content has reached over 4.3 million views and his audience has expanded to over 64,000 followers. His goal now is to help over 1,000 entrepreneurs grow their brands to increase their impact and income each year. So without further delay, let's welcome my friend Jordan Mendoza to the Reality Practice Podcast. Hello, brother. How are you doing? What is going on? Hey, you know what? Every time someone reads that, I'm like, man, you guys make me sound way better than I am. And then I realize I wrote that. So <laughs> yeah, I, I can't I can't blame you. No, hey, I appreciate it. It's an honor to be here. Anytime I get the opportunity to share my story and my journey and, and hopefully some strategies that can help people blaze their own trail. That's what I'm all about. Fantastic. And that's really the reason I wanted to have you on the show today. You know, you're everybody has backstories. Everybody's overcome certain obstacles in their lives, but we don't always see those. We just see the the results and we think it's yeah. kind of like an overnight success, you know, like, dang, look at what he did. And I want to I want you really to and we'll go through it, but I wanted to have you come on to share kind of that the power of having a vision and a dream and really putting it in motion and and how it works how this all how you created this own version of jordan mendoza in only a few short years you know so let's kind of just dive right in where where yeah, were let's you talk about the you know 20 to 30 year journey to create a three-year success right i mean that's yes, yes that's that's exactly what it is and so like you know just just give context to your audience about you know where I started, because I think that's the most important thing is, you know, where, where's my origin story? And so, you know, I was actually born in the Pacific Northwest in Portland, Oregon, and uh, my mom actually only had one lung. And so I saw a woman like literally deal with the diversity every single 
day and get sick and go to the hospital, but never make excuses. And she always had a positive attitude and she always, you know, made sure that we had enough, even if she had to have a side hustler go play bingo or something like this is a woman that worked really hard to provide for her kids. And when she was born, they basically told my grandmother, hey, you're not going to live to 18. All right, it's the first thing they said. You're not going to be able to have any kids because of the capacity this will have on your body. And basically, here, here's your daughter, you know. And, and so my mom ended up having five boys. <laughs> she, wow. she actually lived to 54 years old, and she taught me more lessons than, than I could ever have asked for. Uh, and that's so amazing. when when I think about like a foundational human, someone that's really helped shape me and mold me, it would definitely be mom. And so my dad really wasn't in the picture. I didn't actually meet him until I was 12 years old. And so a lot of people would even think about that and say, wow, like that's that's tough. But at 12, I, I decided my mom said, hey, do you want to go meet your dad? He lives in Washington, D.C. I said, yeah, let's go. And she said, no, Jordan, I'm not going. You're going to go out there. And to give some context, my dad's a Filipino immigrant. He, uh, you know, grew up in the rice fields of northern Luzon and and had a caribou as a kid and would, you know, use that to to actually till the the rice fields uh, so that we can get the rice dried and then you know put it through the mill process. Wow. And then he became, you know, uh, a seaman and he traveled the world painting ships and just and then he actually just wanted a piece of this American dream and in the 80s decided to come to the U.S. I worked for a landscaping company a couple of years and a year from today he's about to retire from having a 40 year landscaping business. A year from uh, today. And so a year from today, a year from today. Yeah, he's wow. going to be retiring. Uh, so what's really exciting about that is when I met my dad at 12, although I didn't know him and, and I could have easily just let this 12 years of resentment ruin our relationship. But I said, you know what, let me give this guy a shot, you know, and I think I learned that empathy from mom, you know, seeing the things that she had gone through and the struggles. I also learned it when I saw my great grandmother get sick and eventually pass away from dementia and cancer. I had a really, really deep empathy. And so I said, you know, let's give dad a shot. Let's see what this guy's all about. Man, I learned really quick that he was a hard worker. I mean, he was up at six. He didn't get home until after six. So, you know, 12 hour days, it was landscaping. It was hard. It's digging, it's weeding, it's mowing, it's, it's weed eating. And he had uh, this perfectionism still does to this day about him where he wouldn't let us leave a yard if, even if there was one single stick on the ground. Like uh -huh. he was a stickler to make sure that, the customer service was was there like we left your place better than we found it and so that really always stuck with me you know how hard he worked and and you know making sure we pay attention to detail like all of those things really uh helped shape me and and i knew i knew it at 12 landscaping wasn't it like that wasn't the thing i was going to do i'm a very high extrovert i need to be around people but over the years, I, I helped him, and I, I learned a lot, and, and I've seen a lot of plants and got a lot of poison ivy and, you know, <laughs> dug a lot of holes and, and, a lot of and, and you know, definitely paid my dues in, in that respect. And so I actually have someone do my yard because I know I'm like, I, I'm out. You know, I don't, I don't even want to do it. And my dad's probably a little frustrated about that, but, you know, I'm like, hey, that's not my, that's not my strength. You know, we got to be self-aware of our strengths, and we'll, we'll probably dive into that here a little bit. But hopefully that provides some context text into people that help shape who I am that no that was fantastic and I, I would have never have known all of that about you you know I thank you for sharing that you know I think we have a lot of similarities in just listening to your story you know your mother god bless her you know that like that positive attitude that yeah. she brought to the table each and every day it sounds like was just very few people had that, you know. Yeah, it's, yeah. It, sense of humor, positive attitude, just the just the ener energy for like life, you know, like being grateful yeah. to be alive, you know. And that really rubbed off on me because I'm literally I'm the same way. And my wife all the time, she's like, "Man, you no matter what happens, you're like, well, the good news is, you know, I always look at the brighter side of things. And and a lot of that, you know, when you can have optimism every day, your, your day's not going to be bad. There might be things that happen that can throw it off. There may be roadblocks and, and things that happen, but it really isn't a bad day, right? If, right. if we, we get the choice to, to continue to have that bad attitude or be in that mood, I mean, we control that. Absolutely. And I, I, I don't know how many years I'm going on now that I can honestly say I have not had a bad day. 
has shit happened has yep. uh, you know has things not gone in any way shape or form according to plan from the second i woke up to the second i put my head on this pillow at night like what the, what the hell just happened today but i wake up the next day and it it can all change just like yeah. that you know and i put my head to sleep at night and i'm grateful for the day while it, it was a complete disaster what an amazing life this is you know if i yeah. live in i live in a land of abundance you know i it's i was talking about it yesterday with somebody it's like it's easy to be grateful when we just look around and see all the things yeah. there are to be grateful for i mean it's just ridiculous yeah. so yeah that that's awesome with the attitude your mom my grandmother by the way she only had one lung and wow she wasn't supposed to make it past i think 40 and wow. she ended up having three children one of one one was my mom uh, and two uncles she lived to be just a month shy of her 92nd birthday wow smoking Amazing. a pack of camels unfiltered a day for 92 years almost and it's like yeah she gave the finger to the medical yeah. industry back then for sure uh that's awesome and, and the dad you know you didn't see him till 12. i i was abandoned at birth and didn't get a stepfather until I was eight years old, but I kind of, I could understand the story, you know, as far as not having that father growing up. But well, well, we can take this even a little deeper because I think yeah. this will add value to our audience. So there was yeah. a, there was a father figure in the picture, but he wasn't that great of a father figure at yeah. the time. This is my stepdad and he was, he was a severe alcoholic. I mean, uh, abused my mom. I remember one day where, uh, sitting in the living room probably playing Super Mario Brothers or something me and my brothers and he's on one of his drunken rages and threw a can full of, like a Ham's beer can slice my mom's head open Gee. and of course of course he goes to jail that night and they stay together but you know there's a lot of tumultuous stuff that happened uh, because of that alcoholism mm. you know and what's in and what I'm very proud to say today in 2022 is that my stepdad has now been sober for almost 30 years oh that's and our fantastic. relationship is better and there's been a lot of healing and things like that but you know we it's still good to look back and see how far not only you've come but the people in your life mm. you know and and so I feel blessed to that I have a great relationship with him now and that I can look back and say that's not the same person you know, he, he he was in a different headspace. He was, uh, alcohol was essentially running his life, not the other way around. Right. Uh, and and so you know, it, it's it's one of those things that I like to share with people because again, there was a father figure around. He just, you know, didn't figure he should be a father for a, a lot of that time. You yeah. know, and so we didn't we didn't really have positive examples until we started. My mom was like, hey your friends are going to church their grandpa's a pastor you know if you want you can ride the the, the van will come pick you guys up and we started going to church and and that was a game changer because we could kind of be outside of our normal reality of you know okay what's gonna is there gonna be another argument is there you know is this thing gonna happen and, and man that that definitely you know helped pave the way for that positivity and, and you know getting a stronger mindset and understanding there's things that are bigger than us out there Absolutely. And I bet it got you out of that fear mindset. You know, you're walking around on eggshells with an alcoholic yeah. all the time yeah, yeah. and yeah, yeah. just getting out of the house, being able to be a kid, you know, is yeah, 100 percent out with friends and not be afraid that you're going to get smacked upside the head. You know, if you if you yeah. do anything wrong or right, you know, with an alcoholic, you did. I think anytime you just you don't know when they're going to pop you one or go off. So yeah. Yeah. And so, and so I like to share that though, because again, at 12, I, I had seen examples of men and it's like, okay, well, is this guy going to be the same as that guy or who, who is he get? again? I was curious. I think I was curious to like, of, of course he's from the Philippines. Like there's a whole other culture there. And you know, of course, over the years, I've had the opportunity to go to the Philippines a number of times and visit family and, and fortunately saw my grandparents, uh, for like the third time, you know, a year before they each passed away. And so there's some really, really cool things that have come out of the relationship. And again, it's very easy to think about the time we missed and, and those things. But why dwell on that? Like, mm -hmm. why not just look forward? And, and because if you live in resentment, if you live in anger, all you're doing is it's, it's kind of like you're poisoning yourself over and over and over again until you you know, just make that decision to forgive them 
you know, and to forgive yourself, honestly, for deal for holding on to it for that long. Mm, that's I couldn't have said it better myself. That's what my talk is about is compassion, forgiveness and love. And it's all about yeah, forgiving others, but mostly yourself and yeah. recognizing that i think it it takes me right into one of the questions i wanted to ask later but we're already in kind of into it so let's dive sure. into it yeah man, uh, let's go one of the quotes i love from you that i found is says life is full of surprises and disguises <laughs> and at, that resonates so much with me because i look back now having gone through all i've gone through it's like everything happened exactly the way it had to happen for yeah. me to become the person I am. And I, I wouldn't change yeah. a, a second of it, but there was some hard shit, you know, yeah. abandonment, sexual abuse, drugs. I mean, alcohol, you name it. There was all kinds of things in my past, but I, I can look back and see the beauty and the grace now yeah. for what they were and what they taught me. You know, when it sounds like you started getting that at an early age, yeah. really, because you could have looked at this alcoholic father, could have looked at it being abandoned for 12 years by your real biological father. I mean, so many things, but you can't, you overcame them. You saw the beauty and the grace in them. Like what, dive into that a little bit for us. Yeah, and, man. You know, yeah, some I, of the, because I'm sure there were more obstacles. Oh yeah. I mean, listen, there, there's plenty of obstacles and I feel like every, like you said, I think everything that we've been through it, it's it's a sum total of who we are today you know like going through these like fourth grade right so let's just put context around this right so you know who i was around fourth grade where we were with my mom and stepdad we were you know we were broke didn't have money food stamps all this situation and uh there's the end of the year picnic for some reason in fourth grade they did this picnic at a place called pier park and uh, we were excited because there was it was a picnic, but we were like, all right, we're gonna do that again for fifth grade. We'll get it two years in a row. This is cool. Uh, and so I'm up to bat. We're playing baseball at this park. I swing the bat, uh, and, and Joey, I run over to this big Douglas fir tree. I reach down to grab the bat, and when I stand up, there's a beehive on my head. Oh and so my I'm God. being stung a ton. I'm running. This is like a scene from a movie. I'm literally running. I'm doing somersaults. Kids are running away because they see this stream of bees chasing after me. And I finally get to where the picnic tables are, and teachers start dumping coolers on me and, like, pulling bees. I mean, it was nuts. But I got stung 53 times in the fourth Holy grade crap. in that one, that one time. And so yeah. I look back at that, and I'm like, you know, I could have easily been allergic and died. Like, I could, you know, I could have easily, plenty of people have died from less. You right, know, so right. why, so why did I make it through 53? Yeah. I 53. mean, so why did I make it through that situation? You know, and so, but, but that was kind of strengthening me, right? Adversity is one of those things I tell people all the time. Adversity gives us strength. It enables, enables us to really see through a lens that some people won't ever get the opportunity to see through. And it's when we can actually share these experiences with others that actually helps them grow, right? But guess who else it helps? It helps us because we're sharing it instead of keeping that in. And I kept things in for way too long, man. Like I didn't start sharing my mom's story. She had passed away in 2012. I didn't start talking about her for seven years. It took seven years to get the courage to share her story. But what happened, Joey, is when I started talking about her, it started really showing me the value in my own, the value in sharing that beasting story, the value in, in sharing the next story that I'm, I'm going to share in a minute and then another story that I'll share later. And all of these things are helping other people now because mm. I had the courage to share. What that's, that's amazing and beautiful at the same time. I know the power that it has. And when, we, when we're vulnerable, when we open up and we let people know that we're not perfect, you know, yeah. but what, what do you think it is that makes, that holds people back? Like you said, 2012, it took you seven, eight years. Yeah. Well, you could talk about it. You know, you're no different than other people. None, none yeah. of us are, you know, what keeps us from. Yeah. I, fear, I think it's, I guess? well, we, we hold ourselves back. Of course, you know, there, we, we've heard, you know, these terms tossed around imposter syndrome and it's, it's all fear, right? We're, we are afraid of other people's opinions or what's going to happen, what might not happen. Like we, we literally throw ourselves and create scenarios that don't even exist. And when we do that, 
uh, if we don't have a strong support system, if we don't have other people that actually believe in us in times that we don't believe in ourselves, it's very, very hard to move forward. And I've been fortunate to have people like I have a, a mentor, Brian Shulman. He's he is the reason why I've, I now have re- reaching I've reached in we're in the third of March. I've already hit over 600,000 views on LinkedIn in three months, and that's powerful. But my buddy Brian Shulman is a guy that said, Jordan, you need to start creating. You're going to have a way bigger brand than me one day. And he planted a seed, Joey, and for some reason I believed the guy, and I was like, okay. And, and now I just you know across 66,000 people that follow me. I'm like, why do these people follow? Like, you know what I'm saying? It's still right, right, right. so surreal, but my goals are not different. I want to inspire people. I want to encourage people. I want to motivate people. I want people to see that they're, whatever they're, they want to accomplish is possible. Mm. You know, they can actually do it if they actually take action because, you know, action creates this thing called momentum. Okay. Momentum creates consistency. Consistency creates habits and those habits are what actually create results. But mm. if you don't take action, you're not going to move anywhere. You know, I heard this, uh, uh, Denzel Washington was doing this commencement speech for this university, and he said something so powerful. He's like, uh, it's actually something his mom said to him. She said, hey, Den- Denzel, you know, you can run in place for a really long time, but never go anywhere. <laughs> you right. know? Uh, and, and how beautiful is that, you know, because, you know, you have to move in order to create momentum. I love it. That's, that's, how, that's how I know I'm in sync when I'm interviewing people, because literally that was the next question was how do we put thoughts into action? Because I I talk a lot about this idea of you have to imagine it first. You have to feel it, see it, believe it, that it can become reality, but you can't just sit there and meditate on it. You can't just sit there and hope that it happens. You know, there's two parts to creating reality. You have to envision it, imagine it, but you have to put it into tangible action, you know, and it's, so yeah, the the importance of that action. I love the cycle you talk about, the action, you know, you have the thought, then it goes to action, which you said then is- Creates the the momentum. Right, which is another question I had for you. Yeah. Uh, You know, and it (laughs) just keeps going and going, but let's talk about habits. I've learned over the last couple of years from my mentor, you know, the his his like key life habit is creating key life habits love it that's great and it's like the, beautiful you know i mean every yeah. habit we make can either be good or bad but when you're making those key life changing habits you know that's that's really the key i think to super fast success is yeah. finding those key life habits. Let's let's go. Let's dive into habits. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the negative habits, right? So, um, yeah. I I drank energy drinks from 18 to uh, 40 years old, and I just stopped. You know, I just turned 41. I stopped probably maybe early into 41, 40 sometime. So it's, it hasn't even been a year yet. But when I tell you, I didn't need them. Like I know today, I did not need them. I don't crave them but i can tell you what happened after i stopped Mm -hmm. my body told was trying to tell me that i did right because it didn't understand what was happening but now i can tell you this i have more clarity i have more energy i've got all the things that they were supposed to give me Mm -hmm. without any of the stuff okay so that's an example of a bad habit that i that my wife's been telling me for years that i probably shouldn't be you know and some for some reason i was like you know what like I'm going to stop cold Turkey one day and I just stopped. Hmm. <laughs> I haven't Good looked back you. and Good I don't, you. and I don't, you know, regret it and I don't crave it or anything like that. Um, so, and, and so and that, that, but that's an example of a bad habit that I took me so long to recognize. But now that I'm there, like I like, why did I do, I mean, think about the money I could just like, you know what I'm saying? And I'm mm-hmm. not going to go down that rabbit hole, but like uh. you could look back and be like, man, that's, thousands i could have bought two other houses and you know whatever with this money that i was spending two or three times a day because i was addicted to this stuff so that's that's what the real thing was is i was addicted and i let it take over and then one day realized that this i i've got i've gone like so far and had successes in so many areas this thing's not going to freaking stop me you know what i'm saying it was kind of like putting my foot down on myself and be like hey bro like you don't need this 
it's, think about what think about other things that you've stopped, you know. And so, kind of, uh, I think that's important to to talk about because, you know, it's it's great if we have a process for good, but what about the process for getting rid of bad? You yeah. know, I think that's something that's probably more relevant to be talking about than, of course, we will give give you the process for good because that's super important. But think about things that you're doing today that you shouldn't be. And it's, what process or and what steps and measures and what action are you going to take that's going to create the momentum and the consistency of not doing it to make your life better? I love that. What what do you think is keeping what kept you from kicking the habit of energy drinks? Was it was it a fear that you wouldn't have energy? Was it, you know, it's like, oh, if I can't. I don't have it. I can't produce. And I mean, it's just the stories we tell ourselves yeah. in our mind. Yeah. Right? I mean, for me, it's funny because I, I would always tell myself this doesn't this actually relaxes me, <laughs> you know, because because I, you know, I've never been diagnosed, but I'm pretty sure I've ADD, ADHD, you know, had that stuff was a kid in the principal's office all the time in school because I couldn't pay attention and focus. Now, now they're actually accommodating. You know, we've got five kids and my 10 year old's a fifth grader. And she's got the choice of a dang beanbag chair. They've got couches. I'm like, where the heck was this stuff at when I was a knucklehead that couldn't sit still? Yeah, fidget toys on the table is like, come on, I would have probably passed my classes instead of being in detention all the time, like like the troublemaker. You know what I'm saying? But uh, that's 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 a, that's a whole other podcast. But uh, <laughs> yes. but um, but yeah, man. So uh, it's, tell me the question again. I just went off on a little tangent. Oh, there, that's so. all right. It's it's it was the idea of the stories we tell ourselves. Yes. You know what is it about the story? Why do we tell ourselves the stories we tell ourselves on the habits we know are freaking terrible why don't we quit smoking why don't we quit drinking why don't we quit all this shit that we know is bad but these stories somehow that we tell ourselves that it's okay or maybe i'll do it tomorrow what do you think does that i think for me what what usually does it for me and this frustrates my wife and you could probably relate to this is like she'll tell me something and I'll just come be like, yeah, whatever. And then all of a sudden, a scientist says it, you know, or someone with a couple extra let- letters at the end of their thing. And I literally will go back to her and I'm like, hey, did you know that I shouldn't be drinking energy drinks because of? And she's like, oh hell no, oh like I've I've been telling you this for 16 day year, you know. So it, it, I think it's one of those things where we we get in like this epiphany from an external influence, and for whatever reason, it kind of knocks us. And, and maybe we hear the word death or we hear something that's like brings us into a place of fear that's over and above comfort. Does that make sense? So like the, we're like, holy crap, like I didn't think about it that way. So we get this new perspective from somebody else. And then all of a sudden it just was like, holy crap, she's been telling me, you know, she's been talking about this forever. Maybe this is something I need to change. That's, that's a good point on it you know something one of my uh, coaches told me was you know everybody has their own point of view right we each have our own perception yeah. and in everybody's mind what they believe to be true is true to them to them you know 100%. so it's that idea of your wife's telling you and same with mine telling us like you shouldn't do this you shouldn't do that and while in their mind it makes sense in our mind we're telling ourselves a whole different story that makes sense that is for us truth and i think that's that's something as humanity we're 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 a long ways to go from it because we still judge everybody we still you know point fingers and instead of just embracing and loving everybody for being different and individual and having their own opinions good for them no we have to we have to judge them you better think the way i think and you should do what i do and it's like no they're whatever they believe in their mind is correct to them let them be that way i can't change them i think it's tony robbins that talks about you know we can't change somebody's thoughts we can only change their emotional state love that yeah 100 percent. so what you know uh Let's see. What's one of the next questions? Let's talk about momentum. You know, you yes. talk a lot about it and, yep. you know, 
it's it's that second step. Well, I guess the third yep. step. First, you have to imagine it and have the vision. Then you have to take action. But what happens yep. when, for you, you started to explode onto the scene? Yeah. And started to have that momentum. And I think for a lot of people, that's where they put their the <laughs> wall up and say, "Holy shit! I don't know what just happened, but I I I'm afraid," and they run. You know, it's yeah. kind of that fear of success. So how do you how do you deal with momentum and how do you push through it and not let it not let it keep you down, I guess? Yeah. Well, I look whenever there's momentum, I always want I always think pedal to the dang metal. Like, I don't think, oh, my gosh, like, why is this happening? How is this? Ha I'm like, I intended for this to happen. And so now let's keep this. Let's keep this train going down the dang tracks. Right. So, like, when I hit, you know, I had uh, so quick story. I've got a podcast now, you know, we're, it's, we're fortunate. We just got, you know, uh, ranked in the top 1.5% globally. We're reaching listeners in 68 countries. It's been phenomenal. Like That's I never amazing. thought it would, it would have any of the success that, that it's had, you know, had some fantastic, you know, guests on speakers, authors, celebrities, stuff like that. But when, before I started that show, I started a show and I don't, honestly, this, this is funny because I don't even remember if the name was Living is Learning podcast or Learning is Living. I don't remember. And it was because I didn't have clarity. I didn't have enough clarity. So I published two episodes. No one's probably heard them but me. <laughs> and it didn't go anywhere. Well, I lacked clarity. So I knew when I started building the momentum on LinkedIn, I said, Jordan, your other podcast failed because of you. So mm -hmm. if you want to do this, you need to get clarity. You need to have a mission, a vision. You need to understand your why uh, uh, and that you want to do this thing. And so I thought long and hard about it, and I've always been inspired by trailblazers. You know, the first man on the moon, you know, Rosa Parks, you know, Lewis and Clark, like all these people that have blazed their own trail. And I was fortunate to grow up with the best uh, basketball team in the country, the Portland Trailblazers. And so I was able to kind of tie that name in with Blaze Your Own Trail. And I knew that I wanted to interview people and learn all about their journeys to success, but not the good stuff. Like literally, what have they gone through to get to where they are? Hmm. And so once I knew that, when I hit 20,000 followers, uh, I launched on January 1st, 2020. And think about that date, folks, for everyone that's, you know, been alive before then, right? Like January something 1st, happened a couple months later. Yeah, right, January right. 1st, 2020, I launched the Blaze Your Own Trail podcast, you know, and and I had, you know, a massive audience on LinkedIn of 20,000 people. So the show really, uh, I capitalized, I put gasoline on the momentum. Mm -hmm. And so what happened with that? Well, I was able to get, you know, a fantastic uh author and coach and speaker named Heather Monahan. She was the second guest on my show and she had a podcast called the confidence creator. She had a book called the confidence creator and she helped create confidence in me being that second guest and, you know, told me literally on this episode, if you go back and listen to it, she's like, Jordan, like corporate America is a scam. You can, you can do this when you're ready. You're going to be successful. And I remember just those words, how powerful they were to hear from somebody that, you know, got out of corporate America, had a very high ranking, did her own thing, wrote a book, had a top rated podcast. And, and, and now we're fortunate to be friends. And I helped her with her book launch. And it's just amazing. You know, what happens when you step outside of your fear, you mm. step into the unknown. I had to, I literally cold DM'd her on LinkedIn, you know, and I was like scared that she wasn't even going to reply. And she didn't for a couple of days and finally did. And then things were screwed up. And I, I think I sent the email to the, so there was all, think about that. Like there's all these things that happen, but right. she ends up showing up on camera and I'm in my corporate office at my full-time job interviewing Heather Monahan. you know? So like, Easy. yeah, I just think about this, but it was like, you know what? I got to step into this. And she said something so powerful in this interview. And, and I think this will resonate with your audience. She said that fear is a green light. That means go. Man, like how powerful is that? So that. look at fear as a green light that means go, not a red light that means stop. I'm writing that down. Um, I love that. It's, you know, the idea, I, I have a, one of the videos I've got on my channel is about the idea of why obstacles exist, right? And it's kind of that same 
thing, you know, same idea is fear exists to actually propel us forward. It, it may, fear exists to see if we've learned that lesson, right? It's like, are we going to push through? Like it, it's always darkest, right? Before the dawn. So it's like, I'm going to put this big, scary, whatever it is right in front of your face. And it's really just an illusion. You just got to step through it. But I think that's one of the big, the challenges we're here in life to overcome is, are we, are we confident enough to step through that illusion? Cause the fear doesn't really exist. It's again, yeah. just the stories in our minds that yeah. fear that nothing's scary. What's the worst that's going to happen? Even, yeah. even to the point of, Oh no, we're going to die. Great. Then we go on to the next journey. You know, what's next. It's like, there's always a what's next. But how, what, how, how much are we going to hold ourselves back, you know, in yeah. the process and everything? Uh, yeah, one of the most powerful acronyms I've seen for fear is face everything and rise. You mm, know, and, it, and, it, and, it, and yeah, and it's so it's like the fear is a green light that means go, right? Face right. everything and rise versus, you know, we've heard false evidence appearing real. You know, we've kind of heard those, but I like that one better. Face everything and rise. I love and, that. You know, because if you, you might fall, but it's okay. You can get back up. You we're know, gonna I, fall. that's we're life. Gonna fall. That's we're, like we're every day. We're here to fall, right? We're here to that's stand it. our knees, but guess what? It grows back. And, you know, we're here to break our bones. What happens when we break a bone? We it, don't live in space. So there's this thing called gravity. You know, <laughs> we're gonna, yeah. we are going to fall. You jump off something, you're hitting the ground, like no matter what. Uh, I love, well, a couple more things, then we'll start to wrap this up, but you've, you brought up the idea of clarity. You know, you didn't really start to explode. You didn't really start to find that momentum until you had the clarity. And I think that a lot of that has to do with just that the the law of attraction, right? When you're when you have clarity on what it is you want, all of a sudden that magnetism starts pulling you. You know, yeah. when we don't have clarity, it's like we're pushing and we're just trying to push that rock up the hill, but I feel like once you have clarity, everything just starts like you become magnetic and everything just starts coming to you because you start seeing maybe the opportunities. I've heard it. Oh, 100 percent. Is it just yeah. the opportunities have always been there? We just couldn't see them through kind of the dark, through the fear. Right. And yeah. then all of a sudden you get clarity that single minded focus. All of a sudden it's like, oh, there's so many opportunities. Which one do I want to? pick yeah. you know, and go down. Yeah. And um, I think one thing that helped me with clarity, again, my, my mentor, Brian Shulman, he really said it best. He said, Jordan, just focus on inspiring one person a day. Mm. That's it. Like literally take the pressure off yourself. One person a day, that's 365 people a year. If you multiply that by 10 years, like think about the impact you can have in your life if your goal is to inspire one person a day. Mm. And so that really helped me because I had clarity that I didn't need to help everybody. I didn't need, you know, millions and millions of eyeballs. And when you go in it to that, when you're not about like the vanity metric side, because those metrics are going to come right as you grow, viewers go up, video views, right, go up, audience goes up, everything happens when it's supposed to happen. Because mm -hmm. I found myself after posting that first video, bro, I was like, who's going to watch this? Like I kept watching it myself. There's like five views. They were probably all me <laughs> because I was so in my head about the vanity side of it. You know what I'm saying? But, yes, but even like, just think about it. Like, even if there are five people, if there are literally five people that saw that, you know, think about this is COVID times. Like how often are you around five people these days? Like that's a lot. That could be a lot of people for somebody, yeah. you know? And then you think about putting it in the context of what happens as you grow and it reaches millions of eyeballs like obviously you get to inspire more and more people but just focusing on a small number you know mm. taking the pressure off ourselves i think we put too much pressure on ourselves we we you know look at someone else's story like you said in the beginning and we compare it to our today when we haven't even seen what they've gone through yet we haven't even seen where they've been or what it took them to even get to that how many hills did they have to climb you know how many mm -hmm. you know bruises did they did get you know mm -hmm. along the way so i think it's important to just look at you like sometimes looking in the mirror is the best thing that we can do and just saying am i doing enough for me like you know and when we can kind of take that inventory uh that will help us you know start to position ourselves in a better light 
Mm, well said on that. You know, it, I, I like I liked the one person a day over 365 days a year. I, I thought of compounding interest when you said that. Right, you know, it's like, oh, you take it out over 10 years if you only impacted one person a day. You know, sure, that's what, 365 or 36,000 or something like that. Ah, after 10 years. A lot years, of people. A lot of people. But we don't, I, I feel like the compounding interest, like in investing, like one person turns into two and then two to four and four to eight. So I, I think, think the math is even one. bigger than that, Joey, right? Probably, because if you yeah. inspire one, that one may go inspire a thousand. Mm, and that's, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah that compound right. interest game, it, it just increases uh, exponentially. Absolutely. Because I mean, just like you inspire one person, that one person, you know, that thought about going one route and they completely go a different route and they become someone that invents something that helps millions. You know what I'm saying? So like uh, everyone needs inspiration. We all need someone to look at and say, wow, like uh, I thought this about me, but now I can see things differently. Or I thought I had gone through this, but now I can see there's other people going through this. So, uh, you know, when we get new perspectives, it really if we want it to, again, there's plenty of times it can go in one ear and out the other, but I always encourage people like learn from other people, learn about their perspectives because you may just learn something that can impact your life for the better. Mm. And, and so true. So true. And like the power of the how, impacting one person a day, just think about that. You know, it, it goes along with the idea of you know, we can't eat an elephant with all at once. It's one bite, yeah. small bite at a time. And it becomes so simple when we start to break things, when we break success down yeah. into those little tiny things, like you have nothing more you need to do today than inspire one person. If you did that, you were a success today. And it just builds and builds and builds. So I love, I think that's such a great message to the audience. You well, know. I think that's a good challenge, you know, but we can challenge everyone that's going to watch this or listen to this. Like, think about your environment. Think about the people that you influence daily. Mm. There might be a person that you come across every day that needs a little dose of inspiration, mm. right? And so if you think about, you know, who can I impact today? That could be in the form of a text. Maybe there's someone you haven't talked to in a few months or maybe a year. Maybe there's someone that you haven't talked to because a situation went awry. I challenge you send them a text, you know, just say, Hey, I've been thinking about you. Hope you're doing great. You never know when someone needs that positive word of encouragement and no one's going to reply back and say, screw you. Like they're going to receive it, whether they reply back or not. And mm -hmm. it will greatly impact their day in a positive way. I have no doubt about that. I, I, I had a couple people come to mind just when you said that it's like, uh, I, I want to reach out to him, but like you said, it it ended or it, it the last time we spoke, it wasn't ideal. So it's wasn't like, positive. L listen, folks, that's real life. Like we have these situations happen absolutely. all the time. You know, like we got there. We can all write a couple people's names down, you know. And mm -hmm. so the challenge isn't writing the names. The challenge is the reaching out and doing, it, doing from it an intentional place where you because because I'm guarantee you this if you argue with someone that's usually someone you care about am I right like you care mm. about each other and and that's usually where the feud started it's because you care about them then right. they were a knucklehead you know what I'm saying that's usually where it starts so you know be the bigger person I know it's not easy this isn't an easy challenge that's why it's called a challenge you know it's not called a give you right it's called a challenge but if you do this I guarantee you it, it will make your day better and I guarantee it'll make their day better and you have no clue who they're gonna positively impact because they receive that from you. Oh, I love it. There's a reason I wanted you to come on the show, obviously. Uh, your message is spot on with what my audience, with what the viewers, I think, with, with where our mindsets are at. So you've been a very refreshing uh, interview versus a lot of, we get into a lot more technical and quantum physics, things like that, you know, often. So having this has just been a really nice change of pace and kind of getting back to the simplistics of how our minds work yeah. and how that would just compassion, forgiveness, love, caring about people, you know, there's no doubt you're coming from a place of love 
with what it is you do. I can see it. Yeah. I know the viewers can see it. So really appreciate it. Tell us, Jordan, about uh, Blaze Your Own Trail, you know, the podcast, sure. what yeah. you do as a consultant, how can people work with you? Where can they find you? Uh, give us all the information. I'll, I'll have it in the uh, description box as well down below, but just yep. give us an overview of everything. Yeah. So well, just to give kind of a little bit of background. So I, I work for the same property management company from uh, 2006 until 2021, January. Wow. And I was with them 15 years. I worked my way up from leasing agent to assistant manager to property manager and then managing multiple properties and then spent eight years in training and development. So I've got a corporate training background and instructional design background, video, all of kind of that corporate stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the other things that happened over that time is I, you know, got a few certifications certified in Myers-Briggs. So, you know, really helping people understand how they're wired and how they can use that information to make their life better. Uh, you know, certified in sales enablement. So teaching teams and organizations how to go from survey to survey with their sales processes and close their sales cycles. Mm -hmm. uh, and then also as an advanced in trainer. So I teach people how they can teach people, you know, in that context. And so what was really cool is when I stepped out, I said, you know, I want to really take all of my gifts, all of my strengths and use those on a daily basis. Because unfortunately, when you work in the corporate environment, you're not really able to do that because they may be like, hey, you know, you're great at talking to people and speaking and you're, you're great at, you know, this creating this stuff. But you got to do these spreadsheets, bro. Like you got to, you got to do this stuff. And you're so, hired like, to do a job. It doesn't 100%. matter how talented you are at other things, doesn't, right? It does not matter. So, so what I started doing is I started my company really as a side hustle in 2019. And I had about a year, Joey, of free advice I was giving people because I wanted to make sure I knew what I was doing on LinkedIn worked. But mm -hmm. what I didn't know is that that year I was literally building my 12 week program. Mm. Right. Be because, again, it was working for me, but I needed to put systems and processes in place and teach that to other people. And now we're helping tons and tons of uh, businesses and, uh, and companies, you know, around the world, which is which is really amazing. Um, but I, I say that because it's so important. Whoever's going to watch us or see this, if you're thinking about starting a business, if you've got a business today, if you've got a side hustle that you want to turn into the main hustle, you have got to get systems and processes in place. You got to get those foundational things in place first. And then you move on to how do I get my message out there and, and start to move traction? Because when, what happens when you start putting this stuff out without the foundations, you're going to end up needing them anyway. So, uh, yeah. so if that's you today and you're like, man, my f foundations are a little out of order, you know, we can help with that. If it's the content side where you're like, I, I'm on LinkedIn, but my profile looks like a resume and I don't know what the heck I'm doing, we can help there and you know, get you dialed in with profile optimization, content strategy, and even teach you how to shorten your sales cycle to bring in more revenue quicker. Mm. Uh, and then outside of that, of course, the Blaze Your Own Trail podcast, uh, uh, you know, we're fortunate to have listeners in, around the world and we'd love for your audience to tune in. It's byotpodcast.com. And the best place to find me, I'd actually love to, to uh, offer your audience something um, be, because I, I feel like this would, this would help a lot of them out, especially if they're trying to grow their brand on social media. And so for, if anyone that watches this or, or sees this video, I don't know, you know, which, which places you air it, but anyone that checks this out and you just send me the, the code word reality on Instagram. So go to Instagram. It's at Jordan J Mendoza. Just DM me the code reality and you'll get $500 off my 12 week LinkedIn coaching program. Oh, all right. So, phenomenal. so Thank and I'll keep that open for about a week. So anyone, you know, a week after this airs, um, you know, feel free to uh, DM me the code reality and we'll do that for, for your audience, Joey. Oh, that's amazing. Thank you so much. I love I love when guests have gifts. Yeah, I try, yeah, why not? I try to do the same thing. So, yeah, I, I awesome. love it. That's thank you so much. I know our audience will take advantage of it. Some of them. Well, have. thank you, Joey. I, listen, anytime, like I said, I can come and share my story in hopes to inspire and encourage. That's what I'm all about. So I appreciate you and, and want to say keep up the great work. You, you ask really great questions. Uh, you do a great job. You're very, uh, you use a lot of intuition, which is uh, very similar to what I do. Um, so keep up the great work. Well, thank you very much, Jordan. I appreciate it. And I do have one last question that I ask all my guests yep. before we get out of here. And 
that is since this show's all about creating your reality you know i always ask everybody if i could snap my fingers and instantly project you into the reality of your dreams that you most desire what would it be and why yeah so i've i've already i've already got this so i want to create a space for you know students and up and coming entrepreneurs it's kind of almost like a an accelerator so think you know a stage where they can learn how to do public speaking think podcast studio think a room with a bunch of whiteboards and computers and i want to really create this place to teach people that they can do they can use their talents these their god-given gifts and abilities which may be video editing which may be the the gift of gab like having conversations it may be broadcasting it may be the technical side but they, if they realize they have those, they can actually put them to use and strengthen them, and that could turn into a business. It could turn into opportunities down the road. So that's a big vision I've got. That's an awesome vision. There's not enough of that out there. I think as, as we move forward into this new earth, really, this new way of living, I think the educational system, from what I'm hearing, is going to be completely revamped. You know, yeah. the things we used to think were important, not so much anymore. So keep going with that because Appreciate there's going to be a place for it. There's going to be a place for all of this, you know, at least at some point when we get there. So don't give up. Keep building that dream because I think it's valuable Thanks, and much needed. So thank you again, Jordan, for coming on the show, sharing My pleasure. your incredible gifts, your positive attitude, your mindset. You know, I think an example for everybody, like, you, if Appreciate you can you. do it, any of us can do it. There's no no 100%. secrets here. You know, you just keep putting one foot ahead of the other and making things happen. And I love it. I'm happy, proud to call you a friend. So, yes, sir. I lastly, I want to. You got it. I want to thank everybody that took the time to watch this today. If you liked it, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Uh, share it if it resonated with your community, with your friends, family. Uh, make sure to hit the subscribe button in order to never miss an episode of Reality Practice. And last but not least, until next time, stay blessed and remember to ask yourself, what reality are you choosing to create today? Bye now.